Welcome to our short but comprehensive tour of Intuiface Composer, the editor you will use to create interactive experiences without coding. Now don't take any notes, this isn't an instructional video, just sit back and enjoy the show. First in Composer we create a brand new project that will host our content. Then we'll add a background image simply using File Explorer. This will give some flavor to the experience we're creating. Then we'll add content, in this case an image a video and a document will just be drag and drop from File Explorer into the scene. Intuiface Composer is a what you see is what you get editor. You can use your mouse to drag and resize items however you wish, and then use the properties panel on the right to further customize how things look and act. You can control everything from their size and orientation to, for example, whether or not you display controls indicating to the viewer how to interact with these items. To ensure users don't get lost in this experience, we'll add a title using a text asset. And then test our work in play mode. Using my mouse, I can interact with all of these elements. I didn't have to tell them to be interactive. Turning the page, playing the video, resizing things works automatically. Very nice. Let's create a second scene in which we'll show multiple items in a single interactive context. To show you what I mean, here's a whole bunch of images. This time we're not adding it individually, we're adding as a collection. We always default to an asset grid collection, that's rows and columns, but there are multiple collections you can choose from. This is the asset flow collection, or the carousel. And using the properties panel, we can make this look exactly how we want it for our design. One other title, so people don't get lost in our experience. And then, after naming this space, what we're going to do is add, through a design accelerator, navigation capability. Now, you could do navigation explicitly using triggers and actions, which we'll look at again in a bit, but we've pre-built a lot of content for you. These design accelerators have visuals and sometimes actions associated with them. In this case, let's pick an arrow that automatically navigates the user to the next space, and then on the new space we already created, add another arrow that navigates back. Again, you don't have to use our design accelerators, but it does make life a little easier, especially when you're new to the product. Now, let's test it out. You've seen this space before. We can interact with everything as expected. Clicking the button takes us to the next space. Here's the collection, the carousel collection, which is beautifully interactive. And thanks to a couple of properties, I can pop out items and interact with them individually. For this second part, let's not just make it interactive, let's make it expressive, let's make it dynamic. And we'll do that by creating a new scenario, a menu. I have a spreadsheet pre-configured with items in our sushi restaurant menu. And I can add them using an Excel interface asset. It makes that spreadsheet available to me directly in the product. Then by simply dragging one of the spreadsheets into my scene, I have access to all the content in that spreadsheet. You can see it represented here. Most of the content is uh, black, it's hard to read it, but all I need is the images referenced in that spreadsheet. It's just another collection now. The references are in the spreadsheet, but as far as Intuiface Composer is concerned, it's just another collection. And I can manipulate it like any other collection. What I'd like to do now is create a data sheet. I don't want to just have the images for each item in my menu. I want to have their name as well in a white background. So I'm changing the image I've used uh, as an extraction from the spreadsheet and adding text and a little background color to it. I'm referencing the spreadsheet to pull the name of each menu item out of the row. So for each row there's an image, for each row there's a product name, and I'm assigning them to this data sheet. And once I have them properly configured I group them together and add that group back to the feed associated with the spreadsheet. So for every row I have a little data sheet and that's how I get each menu item on my collection. Now I'm simply reconfiguring how the collection looks to add new design elements to my scene. In this case, what I like to do is create buttons, buttons that will filter the menu and only show a specific course. That's a new spreadsheet that contains the buttons. I fast forwarded, of course, but we did the exact same thing to create that collection. What I now need to do is filter the spreadsheet based on the button pressed. The idea is to take the name of the button, which is the name of the course, and use that name as a filter for the spreadsheet. Only show me the rows in the spreadsheet that contain this course name. 
To test this experience, I'll use preview mode. Preview mode enables me to run the experience in Composer on an iPad. Player for iPad communicates directly with Composer so I can test my work. Touching any button causes a filter of that spreadsheet to occur, changing the contents of the collection, a collection that remains interactive even though it's based on a dynamic data source. I've just shown you how to display information directly from a data source. Now I'd like to illustrate how to work with resources not even on my PC, like maps, weather information, and even the storage of usage statistics. You see, I have another spreadsheet, and this spreadsheet tells me where my restaurants are located using latitude and longitude coordinates. So the goal is, let's create buttons for each restaurant, let's create a map that shows where these restaurants are located, and let's tell the weather for these locations. So first, for each row, I want a button with the name of the city. I'm binding the name of the button to the name of the restaurant of the city in that spreadsheet. There's four restaurants, four rows in the spreadsheet. That's four buttons, one per row. Simply reproduce this because now I want to get a separate collection. This time, not a collection of buttons, but I want a map. And I want to have a point of interest icon representing each restaurant on a map. Every row of the spreadsheet contains latitude, longitude coordinates. So for every of each of the four images in this collection, I'm going to bind it to one of the rows. This is the beauty of interface assets and binding. For every row in the spreadsheet, take latitude, longitude, assign it to the image, and now you have four images representing the four restaurants. That's a live map, by the way, that's not in my machine. That's a live map from OpenStreetMaps. One last thing, I mentioned we want to show the weather. So not only when I push a button, do I want to zoom in on the restaurant and the map, I want to give you the weather for that location. And then finally, we added some analytics to the experience so that when somebody pushes a button, they'll actually be able to record it. I'll show you that in a moment. So first, when a button is pressed, we need to specify the city, give it to the weather interface asset. We need to tell the map what latitude, longitude coordinate to zoom in on. And we need for analytics to specify which button was pressed so we can study this offline and find out what people were interested in. Let's test it out. For each button, zoom into the restaurant in the map, show the weather, and under the covers, record the analytics. Now that I finished my project and I'm happy with it, I'm publishing this so I can either share it with colleagues, share it with clients, or even deploy it to remote players. Now that it's published, I write a little description, possibly share it with my colleagues, and now I'm ready for deployment. Our goal here was not to teach you, but to excite you. I hope you're excited. Thanks so much for watching and have fun creating interactive experiences.